All righty, guys. Well, welcome everybody to our breakout session. Again, great to see so many familiar faces and names and hope you guys are having an amazing summit. So I'm really excited um, to turn this session over to three incredible state leaders um, today. So I'm going to actually on a different computer than I was planning to be on. So I'm on, but I am flexible. I can bend. Okay. Here we go. So we are going to have a session to talk a little bit about events, communication, and awards from our three incredible leaders, uh, Trisha Berry from Texas, Carol Alisi from Connecticut, and Jennifer Kamek. Kamek, did I say that right? Close. Close enough. Kamek. That was very close. Um, and, uh, and we're going to start off with them. So I'm going to just be quiet and turn it over to you guys to introduce yourselves and then take us on a ride through our state work. Awesome. Well, hi, everyone. It's great to see familiar faces and uh, a good crowd in here today to, to hear our stories in our states. I'm Trisha Berry. She, her pronouns. I'm the director of the Women in Engineering program at UT Austin. That's my day job. And then I lead the Million Women Mentors Texas effort. And I'm going to talk to you today about our Stand Up for STEM awards. I'll turn it over to Carolyn. Good afternoon, all. I'm Carolyn Alessi. I'm from um, Connecticut. And in my day job, I'm project director for Committee Health and Wellbeing, which is the social care hub of our um, healthcare ministry. And I work for Trinity Health of New England. And I'm excited to share with you some of the um, tools that we put in place to keep our network connected um, and up to date on all the great things that we're doing out in Connecticut. Thanks, Carolyn. I'm Jennifer Kamech. Uh, my day job is the executive director of the Committee of 100. We're a business leaders nonprofit that focuses on responsible economic development. Uh, I'm also the founder of Inspiring Women in STEM, which is a professional uh, development program for early career women. In fact, our annual conference is tomorrow. So um, it's been an exciting STEM week for me. Um, Sheila, back to you, or I guess do you want Trisha, Trisha to jump in? All right, I think we told you the agenda. So I think what would be helpful for all of us is just to get a sense for who is here. And so there's a, a prompt there for you on the screen for some things that you could enter in the chat to tell us a little bit more about your work, about where you are and what you are up to as uh, we start to tell you a little bit about our own programs and stories. So I'm going to tell you about our Stand Up for STEM Awards in Texas. This was launched back in 2017, so we've been doing this for a little while, and it was actually inspired by an award campaign that was started with Million Women Mentors nationally. And we have continued at the state level to honor STEM awards uh, in, in a variety of iterations over the, this period of time since 2017. What you see here on the screen is our, our current evolution of our STEM awards, our Stand Up for STEM awards. But when we started in 2017, we actually had just three categories. We had an individual mentor award to recognize mentors who are out there engaging girls in STEM and young women in STEM and supporting them in their career journey. We had a corporate award to recognize corporate partners and companies in, in our state who are doing amazing things to advance women and girls in STEM. And then we had an educational award focused on either an educational organization or an educator who, again, was doing great work to advance girls or women in STEM. As, as we went along in the years, we have evolved into these six awards because we were starting to get some, um, we, we wanted to be able to recognize more groups. We also had high school groups that were applying and it was hard for them to compete against a career mentor who had 20 years of experience or some educational organization that had been out there for a long time. So we now have this slew of six different awards that we offer up each year. We have a team of, of folks who evaluate the award nominations. We typically get about 60-ish award nominations every year spread across these different six awards. Um, we run the, the nomination process through the month of September. 
and sometimes into the beginning of October. We're actually in, in the weeks of evaluating these right now as we speak for this year. And then we present them in December at the annual Texas Girls Collaborative Project, Texas Women and Girls in STEM Summit. So uh, we make a, a point to put out press releases. We make a point to award these publicly and give some time for each of our awardees to share their story as well. Uh, we heard a, a little bit earlier from Olay about the power of role models and we use the Stand Up for STEM awards as a way to showcase some of these amazing role models and role modeling organizations in our Texas community and to help share the best practices of what they are all doing in these spaces. So again, that others can learn and take that into their own programs and grow. So I'm happy to answer questions when we get to that point, but that gives you a little snippet of what we are doing to recognize amazing mentoring that is happening throughout the state of Texas. And uh, I will pass it on to Carolyn. Thanks, Tricia. Um, we're definitely going to be utilizing that um, uh, format for our recognition that we're trying to launch in Connecticut. But so for me, um, I have been state leader for about a year. Um, I was asked by the Lieutenant Governor's Office to assume this role. And um, because I was sitting on the Education and STEAM subcommittee for the Governor's Council on Women and Girls. And so I did not know exactly what this would involve. I didn't have a playbook in terms of how do you start a chapter here in Connecticut, but I did have an amazing team of 18 STEM uh, leaders, women that are um, amazing in this space. And so we kind of just uh, took it, the ball and ran with it. And um, one of the things that we saw was that um, the momentum we were building just based off of the um, platform the Lieutenant Governor Susan Bicewick was um, using to promote the chapter. And then also just our own personal um, connections. We were launched in January of last year publicly. And so that grew our network quite a bit. And I found myself having a hard time managing all the folks that wanted to volunteer for our chapter. Um, and so in May, um, we decided to create a newsletter, a monthly newsletter. So we had about 50 people in our network um, in Connecticut. And uh, the newsletter was a way for us to communicate not only the stuff that we're doing as a state chapter, but also um, some of the things that are going on nationally. And then also um, some of the programming that's going on in STEM um, across the state of Connecticut. So it was a really great, um, tool for us to be able to manage and grow our network. Um, in my newsletter, we usually have um, a, uh, a video. We try to keep it dynamic. So we have some uh, mini vignettes, uh, videos uh, that we do of women in, in STEM careers that share mentoring tidbits. Um, and it's a really great and engaging way when they open the newsletter to see uh, a colleague of theirs um, sharing some great um, stories around their own mentoring into, you know, mentorship into their space. So we keep it dynamic in that respect. And um, I try to make themes every month. So we send it out every month um, through constant contact. And, um, and we typically have a 50% open rate. So uh, right now, as of today, we have over 100 um, subscribers to our newsletter which we've doubled our um, subscribers since we launched it in May. Um, and uh, we usually will highlight um, anyone who's been recognized in the state in STEM. Um, in September, we actually did a newsletter that focused on all the programming and opportunities across the state um, that uh, organizations were doing. And we specifically geared it towards educators um, and parents so that they knew about all the resources that were going on in, um, in our state because a lot of them during the pandemic weren't sure what, you know, had no way to plug into any of the great work that some of our nonprofits were doing. And then I also had a section around volunteerism, you know, so we always want to have people volunteer for our work groups. We have three work groups that we are running um, and we make sure that people can jump in um, at any point in time and be a part of that work. One of them is the mentoring up and really developing professional skills for women who want to meet to go into that next level of leadership. Um, we have a mentoring down, which is um, all around pairing organizations and companies with um, 
potential mentor mentee relationships. And then we also um, are really focused on coding as well in our state. Um, that is a big opportunity. And uh, we have our recognition platform, but we also do, I think recently we, um, last month, we actually uh, amplified some of the state laws that were going on in the state of Connecticut. So Connecticut on October 1 um, passed a law that companies have to disclose the salary range um, when they post a job. Um, and also if their employees are um, um, not within that salary range, particularly women um, and the minorities that the companies are, um, you know, requested or re uh, not requested, but uh, mandated to make that right. So it really supports our initiative around gender parity, um, pay parity in the STEM field particularly, and the Lieutenant Governor's mission around um, paradigm for parity and making sure companies are leveling up their um, employees. So that's what we do in Connecticut. And um, if you have any questions, please feel free to put it in the chat. And Jennifer, I'll pass it over to you. I am sitting here listening Thanks, to Carolyn. Women's Mentor. Oh, we've got someone who needs to mute themselves, please. Thank you. Um, hi, uh, I'm Jennifer Knetch. Um, as was mentioned, I'm the state chair of uh, Million Women Mentors Delaware. I uh, wanted to share with you some of the things that we're doing um, with our online and in-person events. Uh, before I do that, though, I should mention that uh, we have a great um, fun connection to uh, Million Women Mentors getting started in Connecticut. Uh, your lieutenant governor was in Delaware for the National Lieutenant Governors Association meeting and sat on a panel where a million women mentors was talked about by our lieutenant governor. And uh, she got very excited and, and um, jumped on it right away. So we're, we were happy to, uh, to spread the, the movement to, to Connecticut. Um, I want to talk about uh, sort of three different events that types of events that we've been hosting lately. Uh, we've done uh, STEM leaders luncheons. Uh, Women and Girls in STEM Day, and then some virtual career panels. Uh, we found that uh, we had a very dedicated core group of volunteers at Million Women Mentors Delaware, but we really wanted to expand our network and increase the pool of mentors. So we decided to reach out to um, influential leaders in the state and launched the STEM Leaders Luncheons in the spring of 2019. Uh, we invited these influential leaders to um, volunteer to host an event, uh, provide the meals in the venue, and then uh, provide a guest list from her network. And then we as an organization brought in representatives from the girl serving organizations to talk about their mentoring and volunteer needs. Um, I know our friends from FAME are here in the audience today that they were one of the first groups that helped us um, in these efforts. Um, the first event was hosted by Delaware's First Lady, uh, Tracy Carney. And she included state legislators and uh, some of the members of the board of the Fund for Women, which is a statewide philanthropic organization. Uh, subsequent uh, luncheons were hosted by uh, Lieutenant Governor Bethany Hall Long, who you heard from this morning. Uh, we had the Bloom Energy uh, Employee Resources Group, uh, their Women's Leadership Initiative. Uh, we also had a meeting between the Delaware Math and Science Coalitions, which is our groups of uh, math and science educators and administrators. So we've used a variety of formats and sizes and audiences to help spread the Million Women Mentors message. Uh, we found that the, an intimate size and, and being flexible in our format have been keys. Uh, for example, we had an executive from Parteva who was also uh, chair of the board of the Las Aspiras Academy. And uh, she wanted to host her event at the school. So she hosted us there for a breakfast and we had the opportunity to meet with some of the eighth grade students and talk about our educational and career journeys. So that was a fun way to incorporate a little bit of group mentoring into our activities. Um, of course, in 2020, we had to pivot to an online format. And uh, Regina Sidney Brown is here from, the, from Dean, the Delaware After School Network. She hosted a group of her leaders uh, in a virtual luncheon uh, in 2020. Um, we also had a happy hour. Uh, that's the photo you see there. We had a happy hour reunion of some of our in-person attendees uh, in the summer of 2020. Uh, what we, one thing we really found is that the women not only enjoyed hearing about uh, uh, opportunities for volunteering and mentorship, but they really enjoyed interacting with each other. Uh, some of them didn't really have a lot of opportunity outside their own university or organization or company to interact with like-minded STEM women. So um, they really enjoyed that opportunity to get together and, 
and, and uh, share, share commonalities. Uh, we've got a long list of eager hostesses and we're certainly looking forward to getting back to in-person events and gatherings again. Uh, but in the meantime, quite a few of these STEM leaders have now joined the Million Women Mentors Delaware Steering Committee. So we're real grateful for their um, volunteerism and their leadership. Um, another event that we helped organize was the uh, Governor's Proclamation of Women and Girls in STEM Day on March 24th, 2021, this year. Uh, this is really the brainchild of Jackie Means, the STEM queen. That's Jackie you see in the photo with some of her young students. I really need to digress and tell you about Jackie. Uh, she's just an amazing young woman who uh, we're so proud to support and sponsor. Uh, she started the Wilmington Girls Empowerment Initiative when she was just a young teen herself. Um, and her goal is to get little girls in the most underserved parts of the city excited about STEM. She's incredibly poised and dynamic, and she's actually done live science experiments on the Steve Harvey Show, the Today Show, Dr. Oz, and she's a regular contributor to the CBS Saturday morning show, Mission Unstoppable. And she's actually a real queen now. She's the reigning uh, Miss Black USA talented teen. So we're incredibly proud of Jackie and all her work. Um, we followed up that STEM Day uh, signing proclamation with a virtual career panel. And that's the, the other image you see there um, where we had um, some of us talked about, you know, our, again, our career journeys and, and Jackie did some fun experiments for middle school and high school girls. We also helped organize a virtual career panel um, over the winter break last year with uh, DuPont as part of their United Way Days of Caring campaign. Uh, they provided the STEM professionals and we helped recruit high school girls from our network of teachers and after school programs and uh, our girl serving organizations. And we're making plans to repeat that panel uh, this December as well. Uh, I wanna thank Sheila for this opportunity to tell you about things that are happening uh, at Million Women Mentors Delaware. And um, I'll turn it back over to Sheila. I hope this was inspiring uh, and inspired some ideas for you uh, to spread the movement in your state. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you so much. So we actually are doing really great on time for as compared to <laughs> most conferences. So I'd love to open it up and you know just hear from you all. Like you know, what are some of the things I see a lot of our other state leaders on here, and I'd love to hear from any of you. You know, even the real brass tacks, like what have been some of the challenges that have been this year and. Uh, Great. If you'll raise your hand, that'll be lovely. So Shelly from Massachusetts. Um, hi, um, I put it in the chat, but I'm not sure it may have gotten lost. The, the whole thing with having the, the bill that got passed in Connecticut to require companies to post salary ranges, if we could get the, the bill number, uh, that, that would make it really useful if we wanted to do something similar in Massachusetts. Yeah, I put it in the chat, um, so it should be in there, Shelly. Um, I missed it, hold on. We'll get it, we'll get it out yeah, to we'll you. Yeah, we'll get it so to you. Maya, let's remember that. We'll get it out to you. Yeah, great. All right, anyone else want to raise their hand? It's much easier with this many people on. Radhika, you don't have anything to say? That's very unusual. <laughs> no, I'm just absorbing it all in and, you know, welcome to the amazing team and keep up the great work that you all do so. Yeah, it's been been crazy. Um, so Cindy, what are you sharing down here? Oh, you were sharing about the Connecticut piece, but from Idaho. I see you on somewhere. Yes, hi, Cindy. I just, I just busy off on my other screen looking things up. And so I thought since I had it open, I'd post the link to it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, why don't you share a little bit about the work that the STEM Action committee is doing in Idaho. Um, the great. STEM Action Center, the Idaho STEM Action Center is part of the governor's office in Idaho. And so we've been um, doing things for five or six years now, since about 2015. And um, just, we give out a lot of grants um, targeted towards computer science and other things. Our most recent thing that we've been working on is ecosystems. So we've joined the national or international STEM ecosystem movement um, as a state. And then the last year we've been working on breaking our state up into three regions. So we gave everybody, we have six uh, educational regions in the state and we gave them choices 
on what they wanted, who they wanted to join up with and or do stuff on their own. And um, we have a, an Eastern region that joined up with three different things. It's the, it takes up you know, over a third of our state. Um, and then we have a Northern part of our state. And so all those ecosy little ecosystem, what we call hubs are working together. Uh, our state, the state organization has written a grant so that we can fund a hub coordinator for each of those regions. So we have, we're having full-time people come on um, for each of the three regions that are gonna be working on this, you know, helping those regions decide what they want to emphasize in that area of the state. And then we have, the state has committees for awareness, um, beyond what they do for this STEM Action Center, then we're working on the ecosystem. What do we want for awareness for that? Um, working on access. So um, in women's and girls groups, uh, we have quite a few uh, Indian reservations. Um, you know, so what, what needs we have a, for a very rural state. And then the different hubs also have some of their own committees that are working on some things like that. So we're really interested in uh, trying to find a way for people to talk and figure out who's in who. And so I'm looking at Atlas and when it'll let me in, <laughs> I'll look around the system a little bit more because um, we're looking for something like that for our state as well to let people work together and do more of those types of things. Great, thank you. So we did get a question in the chat from Shay who is actually in New York and had a call with her recently. She's very interested in taking over the New York um, Million Women Mentors team. And so she had a question for you three around, you know, how do you sustain uh, the level of excitement and enthusiasm for uh, Million Women Mentors? And, uh, you know, just start maybe with you, Tricia, starting off. You're on mute. We have to say that once every time. I know, I, I get to be the one this time. I know, I was like, I see it, I see it, I gotta get there. Um, yeah, and I, I actually was typing stuff out, so I'll, I'll hit return in a moment um, so you have it in the chat as well. But I think part of it, I mean, it's always a challenge to keep that momentum, especially if you have a volunteer-led entity, which is, is what many of us are doing. What, what we have done in Texas, we have a, our Million Women Mentors Steering Committee that sits underneath our Texas Girls Collaborative Project umbrella. So we actually have several initiatives and different leadership teams or groups so people can pick the thing that matches up with their interests. And each steering committee member has volunteered to serve a two-year term. And we have those rotating, about half of them rotating off each year and uh, the other half continuing. People can choose to continue. They can choose to roll off. It's kind of a never ending um, door, <laughs> rotating door uh, of people coming in and out. Part of what they sign up for is clearly stated on the nomination form, is clearly stated in all communications to them, and I repeat it all the time, is that they have to help with the work. And one of those things is helping review these Stand Up for STEM awards. And so when I got the list of the nominees and downloaded that over the weekend, I sent everybody on that steering committee the, the list. Um, the information so that ideally all of them will contribute to the reviews. I mean, in reality, is that going to happen? No, I fully anticipate I will not hear from several of them who I probably haven't heard from all year. They signed up, it's on their resume, off we go. That's fine. I just know that's part of the volunteer, um, you know, the, the nature of volunteer organizations. But I do try to keep enough communications going and enough simple-ish asks like that throughout the year to keep them engaged. And again, they're volunteers. I may get half of them very busy this week reviewing things. Maybe the other half are gonna be the ones that are doing something else in another month or two. So I, I tend to see all of them at some point, even if I don't get all of them all the time. And that's okay. I'm just, I just go with the flow. Yeah. And I think, you know, one thing that you've done, obviously you also have a newsletter that you put out, which is pretty great too. And I think you talked about something I think is so important here. You know, we're not expecting people to start from scratch and build something. So I think the key is really finding those like-minded efforts that are already going on in your state and connecting to them. So I see a lot of names of people I know. I see a lot of names of people I don't know. So if any of you are interested in participating in your state team, um, we'll put in the chat, but if you can email us at states at or 
or me personally at SheelaThinkingMedia.com. Megan, if you can put that in, that is a way we can get you connected to the right team that, you know, is working on this work. And, you know, and I love your idea of like two years. You don't, because the problem is every, almost every, Trisha, you and Jenny Kopeck, I think are only two state leaders that are the same that we started with. Because obviously there are, you know, changes in people's lives. So I think it is really important to note that and to be expecting that when we are really grateful that people are contributing their time because it is volunteer. So I don't know, Carolyn, did you want to, you're, you're like, you're kind of on this newer side. So you have a lot of energy in your state right now. So I'd love to hear from you thinking about the future. So yeah, so we, we're similarly set up as Trisha. Um, we have a steering committee. So I run a steering committee. Um, and when we first started, it was, um, we were meeting every week for three months because we had a, a goal of kind of going live in January and public in January. So we were creating our strategic plan around that. But since then we've dropped down to meeting monthly. But I, I have to say the women that are engaged in this steering committee are, are highly invested in this um, you know, space because they are in the STEM field and they do see the big gaps around mentoring and role modeling. And so for them, it's, it's, it's important for them to carve out time. Um, I did have one steering committee um, um, member drop off, but she ended up having another colleague take her place so that we didn't lose the presence of her company um, at the table. But I also work it out where they can um, break out into working groups because I find that when they are working towards something, they tend to stay more engaged. So um, rather than just coming to a meeting every month and um, you know listening and talking and banding around ideas, we, we try to create some concrete um, projects that we can actually um, drive. And so like for instance, last year, one of our working groups was tasked with creating video vignettes and partnering with the Yukon um, digital team to create our video vignettes um, of women in STEM. It's called Faces in STEM. And so they had a three month timeline to get that done and wrapped up and then launched. And so because it was such a short term project, they were highly engaged, highly invested. And, um, and I find that that makes it easier for people to feel like, okay, I'm working towards something. And, um, and I'll stay engaged because they're relying on me to get this done. So I think if you can find ways to give them projects, I think that's um, an important part of keeping them engaged. And then also making sure that everything that I'm doing um, in, in the MWM Connecticut is tied into what the state is doing. And so that really is very key because a lot of the women on my steering committee are invested in want, wanting to know what's the state doing to um, close the gap in um, the STEM fields, to elevate women, to um, get them you know, pay, paid at the right level. So me being able to plug in all the work that's being done in the, on the state level helps energize them so they don't feel like they're kind of doing this in a vacuum, that we're complementing the work that's being done in the state. Great, thank you so much. So lastly, Kim has her hand raised. So I'm gonna let her have the last question. And then, cause we all want to go back to see who won the awards guys. So Kim. Okay, hi everybody. Kim it was. Our... <laughs> well, I just didn't want to um, leave this meeting because I'm on the way out without, you know, just giving a shout out to our Senator Hewitt who is so, so valuable to our group in Louisiana. And as well as the many members that are on the call today. So I'm always, we have an amazing network of, gosh, I bet we have about 30 uh, women on our, and men on our committee that are, are very gung-ho. Our, our, our network thus far has mostly been a peer network where we, where, we, where we meet and we talk about all the possibilities. We share each other's opportunities. We ask um, input. It, it's just great. Um, we do have newsletters and, and things like that to get the word out on various things that are going on. And every day I see new activities going on in Louisiana. Um, our state is having a, um, a summit, which of course, Senator Hewitt talked about the Lost STEM initiative here in Louisiana. And I'm proud to say that, that we um, designed it so that we would have one panel for women, 
that will promote women and girls in STEM. Um, this will be business leaders um, in the community and um, our moderator will be a diversity um, vice president here at LSU. So we're really excited to begin to embed things like this in, in all of the activities that go on in our state in, in regard to you know, equality, opportunities um, for not only, um, you know, traditional women that are, you know, just doing great in, in life and work and school, but those that have been left out of opportunities that we all know about. So, right. you know, lots of things going on in Louisiana, but again, I can't, I, it would take me an hour to talk about all of the things that are going on individually in our own communities. And we thank you for all the ideas today. Maybe we should have a, an awards piece to that panel. So I've got a great idea to share with my, my group later. So thank great. you. Great. Thank you so much. And uh, we probably, Carolyn. Oh, I just wanted to mention really quickly that um, at our steering committee meetings, I, I sometimes will have a mission moment speaker, a young student come and speak about their experience in the STEM field, or I'll have a guest speaker come just to kind of change it up a bit. And, and every now and then the Lieutenant Governor joins us. So that's kind of how we keep things um, moving and excited. I do want to just take a minute. Um, many of you who have been involved with us for a long time knew our chair, uh, Carol, uh, Carol Gerardo, who was in Rhode Island. And unfortunately, about a month and a half ago, she passed away from cancer. Mm -hmm. And so I just wanted to take a minute to recognize her inc incredible spirit. She was also at the first MWM Summit. And, um, you know, just thinking about her and her family. And I know, I think we have, I thought I, I saw Daria as on as well, who has been her able partner in this work. And, um, you know, life is short as we well have learned. And so uh, just wanna take that minute to be able to recognize her. All right, we are putting the main link back into the chat, guys. We need you, if you are a state leader, please, 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 please make sure you join. I heard Kim say she might not be. Kim, join if you can. Um, and, and definitely all of you, so you can hear a little bit about our awards and, um, and wrap up. And again, thank you so much, Tricia, Carolyn, Jennifer, really all of the state, wonderful state leaders and state team members that I see on this. You guys are amazing. I'm inspired every time I hear your voices. So see you back in the, in the other room in just a minute. All Thank right, you. bye guys.